This evening, a D.C. federal jury issued a unanimous verdict holding Rudy Giuliani accountable for defamation. That's $148 million. That's the amount of damages that a federal jury determined that Giuliani must pay Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, the two Georgia election workers that Giuliani falsely accused of stealing votes in the 2020 election. After the verdict, Giuliani came out to the cameras. Possibly we'll move for a new trial. Certainly we'll appeal. The absurdity of the number merely underscores the absurdity of the entire proceeding. The comments they received I had nothing to do with. My comments had no connection at all to those. There were thousands of things on the pre in the press about this, of which mine were a small amount. You'll recall that back in August, the judge, Beryl Howell, issued a default judgment against Giuliani based on his admissions and failure to turn over evidence in the case. Accordingly, the task for this jury was to simply put a number on the human toll that Moss and Freeman suffered because of Giuliani's lies. Now, cameras are not allowed in federal court, but we know what that toll looked like because Moss and Freeman have indicated the injuries that they suffered when they testified before the January 6th committee last year. I've lost my name and I've lost my reputation. I've lost my sense of security. A lot of threats, um, wishing death upon me. A lot of them were racist. A lot of them were just hateful. It was horrible. I felt homeless. This turned my life upside down. Don't want anyone knowing my name. There is nowhere I feel safe. Nowhere. Do you know how it feels to have the president of the United States to target you? The mother and daughter said that because of Giuliani, they were the targets of racist attacks and death threats. And this jury clearly agreed. Joining me now to break it all down is former federal prosecutor Christy Greenberg and Ken Friedman. Friedman was the press secretary for Giuliani's victorious 1993 mayoral campaign. So, Christy, first up, what are your thoughts on this judgment? Sweet justice. This is a great day for the justice system, for accountability. You have somebody who is the former U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, my old office, who used to prosecute the mob. And now he here unleashed a mob on two innocent people, just civil servants trying to do their jobs. And as a result of his comments, as a direct result of his comments, these women went through hell. They you know, had to move. They couldn't find work. They were you know, terrified for their safety. I mean, what he put them through, they lost their lives as they know it. And so for Rudy Giuliani to say that, that you know, the, the numbers are absurd, you know, anybody should think about if your whole life was changed and, and you felt like you couldn't walk outside, what would be a price for that? You know, the punitive damages here, the emotional stress that's involved, the jury was clearly sending a serious message, not just to Giuliani, but anybody else that has a platform, that when you lie with impunity, there are consequences to that. So the consequences really are the question here. If you're a juror, how do you assess this human toll? I mean, these are not things that you can necessarily put a price on, feeling safe in your home, being the target of racist threats or death threats. How do you think a juror went about assessing all of this when they came up with that massive $148 million dollar judgment. Well, there are different components to the judgment. So one of those components was for defamation. And so the plaintiffs put forth an expert to say, here is what it would take. Here are the steps that it would take to be able to try to repair their reputations online. Remember, you know, one of the plaintiffs had gone to try and get a job. And when she did so, you know, on online, there's a picture with, you know, liar and fraud on her name. So the social media that lives forever. Mm -hmm. And so trying to basically repair those reputations. The, the jury looked at that. They looked at the emotional stress they, they heard from these witnesses themselves and, and obviously had to try and come up with a number for that. But they were guided by the expert testimony and then clearly by the emotional testimony and then the punitive damages, which had to have been affected, I would think, by the fact that Rudy Giuliani, the day before, in the middle of this trial, said... Yeah, I, I'm. I, everything I said about them was true. No remorse. The opposite of remorse. That had to have upped the punitive damages. Mm -hmm. So with all of this in mind, um, what do you make then of Giuliani saying he is going to appeal? And then after this judgment has been declared, going outside and essentially doubling down on the same comments? 
Yeah, he's just setting himself up for another lawsuit because the judge looked at this and said, well, I can't have an order in place forever to stop him from talking about them. But they, his, the attorneys can certainly bring additional actions for defamation. And since there's already been a finding that these statements are lies, they can certainly be found to be lies again. Um, as to the effect on Giuliani, that will remain to be seen. He claims to have no money, but he clearly has future income sources. He, mm -hmm. he gives speeches. He speaks on podcasts. You know, he has an income stream. So can they get access to that? It will be a matter of, I think, trying to trace his assets. He has a $6 million apartment that's uh, up for sale. They're going to try to do their best to trace his assets, his future income, and see what they can get from that. Well, Ken, you know this man perhaps better than anybody. Um, how is he going to be able to satisfy this judgment? And what does the future look like for him with this $148 million sort of Damocles hanging over his head? Well, he's not going to be able to satisfy it. And, you know, even if they garnish his wages, um, it's going to take 100 years in order to pay that that judgment. Uh, but listen, I hope election deniers everywhere were paying attention to the, the judgment today. And they realize that you can't defame people, particularly uh, private citizens who are not public figures. And Rudy should have known that for sure. All right. Um, but he went, he, he picked on you know, people who couldn't defend themselves um, instead of picking on people his own size, you know, the low hanging yeah. fruit, so to speak. But but David, David won today. Um, listen, I, I've known him a long time and I worked with him uh, on his first successful mayoral campaign. And I never knew him to be self-destructive, certainly not this self-destructive. Um, he lit himself on fire, then he doused himself in gasoline. And he actually tripled down today, if you think about it. He defamed them, then he defamed them again, and, and today he defamed them a third time. So he just keeps digging a deeper hole for himself. Well, he keeps digging this hole, Ken, but Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss continue to state their truth. And over time, their truth has actually been surfaced as debunking Giuliani's claims. So here's some tape from the January 6th hearings that makes that clear. Ruby Freeman and Shea Freeman Moss and one other gentleman, quite obviously surreptitiously passing around USB ports as if they are vials of heroin or cocaine. What was your mom actually handing you on that video? A ginger mint. A ginger mint. How do you, what do you think about that person that you saw in that clip? And does that square with the man you once worked for, the man who was once known as America's mayor? No, as I said, he, 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 he didn't pick on, he didn't pick on little people. You know, he picked big fights. As, as as mayor and U.S. attorney, he went after the mob. He went after Wall Street. He didn't go after, you know, defenseless civil servants. OK, and and um, it's it was despicable that he did that. And, and people saw through it. Um, he says he didn't get a fair hearing or a tribunal uh, in court and he's going to seek one elsewhere. He obviously did get a fair hearing. And I don't know where he's going to where he's going to go to get uh to get satisfaction, um, you know, in a new trial or in, okay. a, in, a, in an appeal. So, Christy, this is not the only legal proceeding in which Shea Freeman, uh, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss play a role. They are also big players in the Georgia RICO case where Giuliani is also a defendant. How can this judgment impact that criminal prosecution in Georgia? Well, it was really interesting. We wanted to see, even though this trial was just about the damages and the liability had already been determined by the judge, it would be interesting to see in the closing arguments how they were going to treat this. And essentially, I mean, Rudy's lawyer almost, you know, was throwing him under the bus. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, saying, well, yeah, he did harm them mm -hmm. and he did do bad things, but it's not as bad as they say. So just don't, don't, don't say that the, the damages should be so, so high, which, you know, the admission of what he did, and even in his statements out of court today, that he said these things and that they mm -hmm. were true. Those are admissions. Mm -hmm. Those are not under oath, but they're out in the public. And the prosecutors in Georgia, you can believe, are taking note of everything he's saying because they can then use those statements against him.